If you can say and spell your name for us. Uh, my name is Raelle Childers. It's R-A-E-L-L-E-C-H-I-L-D-E-R-S. Uh, -E -E um, and I work at Pilot Brewing. Awesome. So I'll go ahead and start now. We, uh, I'm Erin Laramore. I'm here with Raelle Childers, uh, a brewer at Pilot Brewing Company in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today is Wednesday, June 13th. And um, we're here with an interview for the Wellcrafted NC project. Thank you for joining us. No can we start? Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you? Where, where are you from? And how did you get here? Uh, so I'm actually uh, grew up in Texas. Um, so after I graduated high school there in '09, I um, moved up here to uh, go to Johnson and Wales University um, to get my culinary arts degree. And um, after I graduated from Johnson and Wales. I just like got really into brewing. I didn't really, um, I guess I found when I was there that um, food wasn't really my true passion. And I had been drinking beer and um, had a couple of friends there who were into home brewing and stuff. So um, that's basically how I was introduced to craft beer and brewing. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and I've been here in Charlotte ever since. I uh, haven't left. I love the city. So, <laughs> well, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how your career kind of in this industry has has progressed? So, where it got started? Yeah. So, um, it's it's fun actually how how it did progress because I was a home brewer for several years and I um, was 100% self taught. I just kind of um, watched a lot of YouTube videos and and read a lot and just experimented. And um, I would go to um, the homebrew store in the town where I was living at. It was um, Monroe, North Carolina, and um, there was an alternative beverage down there. And they have them here in Charlotte, um, but this was like a, an offshoot of, of that um, company. And um, Travis, the homebrew, the store owner there, um, he gave me lots of advice over the years on how to brew and everything. And one day I went there and they were closed down. <laughs> and I was like, Where, where's alternative beverage? And I've come to find out he opened his own brewery and I didn't even know about it. <laughs> so you, which brewery is it? It's Sweet Union Brewing in uh, Indian Trail. Cool. So um, he was nice enough. Uh, I, I applied there. He knew me. So he was nice enough to give me a job there. It wasn't a brewing job or anything. But um, I was doing bartending and um, a little bit of cellar work, you know, just uh, messing with kegs and stuff in, in the back. And I worked there for, um, you know, a short time, uh, really familiarized myself with like beer. And um, from there, I moved on to um, see, I heard that Seaboard Brewing was opening up in Matthews. So um, I went there, I applied. I didn't um, get the job right away. Uh, it was the job was for an assistant brewer, and I thought I, you know, I thought I had learned enough and knew enough. Um, I had been brewing for you know six or so years, uh, just home brewing on my own setup, and um, I didn't get the job right away. But they did give me a job bartending uh, at their at their sister store next door at uh, Temple Mojo. So I was bartending there for a while, and um, they ended up hiring an assistant brewer. And then um, their head brewer ended up leaving. And after he left, they promoted their assistant brewer and they came to me and they were like, hey, well, you wanted this job, here's your chance. So um, I got the assistant brewer job there. And uh, that was where my professional brewing career really started off. So um, I worked there for a pretty short amount of time. Um, it, was, it was about six months or so. And I really just got a really good opportunity with Rachel. You know, she we met at um, at a Pink Boots Society meeting. Actually, it wasn't really a meeting. It was a, it was a whole brew day at Bold Missy here in Charlotte. And um, we just got to know each other, really liked each other. She offered me a job, and now I'm here at Pilot. <laughs> awesome. So. Um, a little follow-up question on something. You said you talked about your culinary arts background. Yes. Do you... Um, do you feel like having that kind of background? I, I would assume that's not a background that every brewer has, but one that could be really handy. It probably does come in handy sometimes. Um, I think probably one of my strong suits in brewing is recipe development. 
So I do think that some of um, some of my culinary background does help with that. Um, not in a ton of ways, you know, mm -hmm. just like just understanding ingredients, basically. Um, other than that, uh, basically, it was just a great gateway into understanding beer and getting into it, you know. Uh, I don't really utilize my culinary background a whole lot these days anymore, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you talked about kind of starting off as a home brewer and then moving to commercial. Yes. Can you talk about some of the challenges kind of in going from home brewing to commercial or even some of the benefits of having that background? Oh, there's there's got to be both. <laughs> there are so many benefits and it's and it really is a challenge as well. So uh, when I first got the job at a at a commercial brewery, I had no idea where to begin on this big equipment. I'm I'm used to like five gallon batches um, and getting to do basically whatever I wanted to do. So I could experiment with any ingredients, um, take as much time as I wanted to, um, you know, brewing the beer, uh, making sure it was like up to my specific standards of quality. Mm -hmm. And when you go into a commercial setting, you know, you're on someone else's schedule and you're brewing their beer unless, unless they're nice enough to let you develop your own recipes, but you're mostly brewing their beer, um, their recipes and you're on a schedule. You have to get that beer out a certain time and you have to make sure you're adhering to a schedule or else you can't just let your brewery run out of beer. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's definitely different. There's a lot of different equipment um, that you have to learn. Um, so my first brewery that I worked at was, um, it was a steam system, which I had never worked with steam. I had never worked with um, any sort of calandrias or uh, you know jackets. I'd never had like any type of glycol system or anything. So I had to learn all of that right off the bat. So it was definitely um, a challenge, but if you put your mind to it, you know you can learn it all really quickly. So yeah. that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, as you kind of have continued on, you talked about pink boots a minute ago, but. Um, what kind of resources have you drawn on to kind of help you grow as a brewer? Yeah, right. Um, Pink Boots is a big one. It's actually huge. Um, they just offer so many opportunities for women to get to know each other and to learn. Their, their main mission in life is to inspire women and to, to teach them more knowledge about brewing. and. So there's been a lot of opportunities with that, just getting to know um, other people. It's, it's been a great resource so far. They offer scholarships to, for women who apply to them. Um, other than Pink Boots, other resources have just been um, classes. I've been to several classes on yeast, on um, beer tasting. Um, I've done some judging sessions with um, the Carolina Brewmasters and judging is one of the best ways to really get to know your styles and your off flavors and things like that. And other than that, just reading. is That's the main part. You need to read. <laughs> You've got to have a lot of knowledge if you're going to brew, brew really good beer. Do you have any favorite books that you've kind of, that, that are kind of your go-tos? I have... Or just a lot of them. So many. <laughs> um, yeast. Uh, Chris White uh, from White Labs. He mm -hmm. he's done the he did um, yeast, and it's uh, just a great book. And that whole series of books, I can't remember specifically the name of the series, but there, there's yeast, water, hops, and uh, malt, and just that whole series has been really good. There's also the Bible in which I learned how how to brew basically off of um, Charlie Papagian. Um, he did, uh, <laughs> what's the, <laughs> I'm being put on the spot now. Um, what is the name of the it's, uh, guide to home brewing? I yeah. Think yeah. Uh, the guide to home brewing. And then there's John Palmer's how to brew. And so those books have just been basically, if you have a question, just a basic, simple question about brewing, those have basically all your information in them. And then there's all kinds, there's a million books out there, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, those are the main ones, though. Very cool. Um, what well, do you have? You know, you've you've worked in a few different spaces and worked with a few different groups like Pink Boots. Are there particular people that you kind of see as your maybe who've been a mentor, made a major impact in 
kind of your development as a brewer? Yeah, there have been. There's been several. Um, so I mentioned um, Travis from the homebrew store. Uh, he, he helped me so much just learning the basics on how to brew. Um, and then my first job, commercial brewing, the head brewer I worked with, uh, Greg, he, we're still like amazing friends now and he has been so helpful in teaching me everything about commercial and professional brewing. And then Rachel is one of them as well. She is probably one of the best brewers I've ever met. Everything she does is amazing and she's so smart and just sharp. And uh, she and she's a, a woman like me, so she's very inspiring. You know, she's she's very she's pretty young and she's opening her own brewery right now. She's already been around the block at several big breweries, so she really inspires me to be better. And I I can see now that I can do what she does. So yeah. So big question: What's your favorite part of brewing? Huh, see, this is the question that I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love all of it. I love everything about brewing. Um, I love recipe development. That is probably one of my biggest favorite things, just being able to sit down and like make a recipe and just get excited about it, you know? And just think about what, what does this need to make this beer good? And do you have a favorite recipe that you've developed, either your homebrew? I do actually, yeah. um, and it's one that I started when I, first, when I first started brewing, and it's one that I brewed hundreds of times probably and changed one little thing about it every single time until it was perfect mm -hmm. and that is um a red that i've done and it does and it sounds boring but <laughs> it's um a good basic is good it is yeah and it's and i've just gotten it down to where it's just so delicious now and it, but i'm still just changing it all the time <laughs> can, you, can you talk a little bit about like your thought process as you're changing it like how do you de decide what to change and how to yeah, so I start with a, a base recipe, you know, and you get to know your recipes over time, like how, what percentage of what um, goes into specific styles of beer. So I start with a base red recipe, and then you just experiment with different malts. So I'm like, you know, I want this to be a little bit more like biscuity. So I go and get some like specialty malt that will give it a little biscuity flavor. And you know, I want to take the IBUs up a little bit. I want this to be a tiny bit more bitter, so I'll up my 60 minute addition hops and you know, just ch tweak little things like this. You just taste the beer and then you think about what you wanna change and then you just make that one change at, one at a time. That way you know exactly what you did wrong that time. So that's how I've been developing my red recipe over several years and that's how I basically um, develop all my recipes. So I'll start with something basic and then just change, tweak it a little bit with each batch that I do. So hopefully over, hopefully the first time it works out, <laughs> but that rarely happens, so. Um, so you like all of the things as favorites, but is there a part of brewing that is your least favorite part? Um, it's not really necess it's not necessarily part of brewing itself. But um, I think the one thing about the beer industry itself is um, a little app that people like to use called Untapped. <laughs> and to me, the only reason that I say that I, I dislike this is because, um, and I like to compare it to like, say you're an artist. If you're an artist, do you want any person off the street who may or may not know anything about art, no training whatsoever, coming in and being like, ah, oh, give that one star, you know? And so to me, I think it's a little bit unfair to a lot of people who are brewing really good beer. And, you know, maybe someone who doesn't know a lot about beer comes in and they don't, they just happen to not like a certain style and then they might rate it, you know, one or two stars and then that, it reflects on your brewery. It affects. Mm -hmm. It reflects on you, yourself as a brewer. So, it's just. I wish it would go away. I know it will never will. I know it never will. But um, I wish that more people would get an education before just like going and just judging uh, someone's beer for everyone to see in the world. Yeah. And that's really the only part of the the industry that I just like. I w It could go away, and I'd be totally fine with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not the only person to mention. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we talked about your favorite recipe that you've, you've developed. 
and this so it may be the same answer, but do you have a favorite beer that you've brewed or a favorite style to brew? I don't have a favorite specific beer that I've ever brewed, um, but I do have a favorite style to brew, and that would be an IPA. And the only reason for that is is because it can be so different. Mm -hmm. uh, you can you can brew one style of IPA and then another style of IPA, and they can be completely different beers. And that's that's what's really cool about it to me, just because there's so much you can do with an IPA. And that's true for all kinds of other beers as well, but I feel like it's a popular style that a lot of people love, and it's in high demand all the time, and you can just brew any any range of variety and people will still there will be it will be for somebody somebody likes a really dry bitter ipa you can do that for them someone might like a super hazy ipa and you can do that for them and it, they're completely different beers yeah. so i just really like messing around with it just because it's so versatile that makes sense um so kind of putting your forward thinking cap on how do you see kind of the brewing industry you, you know, you've worked in the industry for a while now. How do you kind of see it going in the next five or ten years? What what path do you see it heading down? Just big picture. Um, big picture. Um, a lot of people like to say the bubble's going to burst, and I I agree and I disagree. Uh, so I think I feel like the breweries who are really big right now, they're well established. Um, they're going to continue to do really well. Um, I feel like breweries who are opening up now and they're trying to, they're trying to be be big, very big, and uh, expand before they can, not inorganically. Um, they, it's gonna, the bubble's gonna burst, and they're gonna, it's gonna hurt them, you know. And we're gonna see a lot of these bigger breweries, and we've already seen a lot of them. You know, Green Flash is one that's that was recent. Um, they're gonna go by the wayside. They're, they're gonna sell out. They're gonna, you know, it's, it's something bad's gonna happen. But I do feel like, and this is, this is hopeful thinking for me, um, that your neighborhood brewery, your small brewery, that may ne may or may not necessarily distribute their beer widely, um, they're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna stay around. Because if you think about it, what did people do before? Um, before there were t the brewery explosion, you know, before there were so many breweries, um, you know, adults went out and they drank at bars. And bars never, like, that bubble never bursted. People all are always going to go to a bar. And they're going to go to their neighborhood bar. So I feel like it's just the same with breweries. You know, they're going to go to their neighborhood brewery. They're going to go to the people who know their name, who, who know what they like, you know. And I think um, small breweries like that are going to... Uh, be really successful and stick stick around, and hopefully it it just becomes a part of American culture, kind of like over in Germany and Belgium. And I don't think that we're going to get too saturated. I think there's there's a room for there's room, plenty of room for more. I think you know. Yeah, and you guys here at Pilot are going to take that small. You're taking that small community. Exactly. Approach. That that is exactly what we're trying to do. We're um, we're not distributing whatsoever. Um, we're just your tiny local neighborhood brewery and um, we want to get to know everybody who comes in and we even have stuff on our website like you can come in and um, suggest a beer style because we're going to have so many beers on and so many different varieties if you want to have something crazy and you have a, a suggestion for us we'll look at it and if we want to brew it then you know we'll do that so we have little participation things like that and we're, we're going to have all kinds of things that um, incorporate the neighborhood and the community into the brewery itself. Yeah. And so. you, talked, you, you talked to me a minute ago off camera about um, some of the te testing, tastings that you've done in mm -hmm. the apartment complex next door already. Right. So they, um, there's a big apartment complex next door and um, they're right, we're basically in the parking lot of, of uh, the apartments. And just everyone in the apartments, they're so excited for us to be opening up. And so we held a tasting up there um, in their little like sky lounge club um, where the residents can come in and hang out. We just set up in there and had like tasting. We had three beers that we brought and everybody came in. Um, we talked to them about the beers and you know, we're neighbors and everyone's excited. They've been looking out their windows at our brewery developing. 
So uh, they're all excited. They, they love the beer and, uh, you know, just little things like that, getting to know our neighbors before we even open up. Yeah. Just so, you know, hey, we're here. We care about you, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I know that you guys haven't opened your doors yet, but do you know yet kind of, are you going to have a signature beer or are you just going to go with lots of difference? Yeah. So no signature beer. Um, our whole uh, MO basically is to do never brew the same beer again <laughs> unless it's like something you know amazing and everybody just like demands it you know <laughs> but um what we're trying to do is constantly rotate so we're gonna have like probably around 10 to 15 beers on tap at all times and just constantly be rotating um every single one of our brewers is also a bartender and every bartender is also a brewer so you know we're gonna have five or six brewers in there we're gonna need them all um to be able to brew that many varieties uh, and that often, you know? Yeah, so definitely. Um, so, you know, you've mentioned you're a woman in the industry, you're gonna be working with Rachel, a woman in the industry as the owner. Um, craft brewing is stereotypically a male dominated industry. Yes. Giant <laughs> beards. Um, <laughs> Do you feel that there are specific challenges that a woman entering this field might face? Absolutely, I do. Uh, and I myself have experienced many of them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not typical for every woman to experience, every woman in the industry has their own different experiences. So my experience is not typical of every woman. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I did first start brewing, I've had a lot of um, difficulties um, with respect um, you know, there's been harassment, there's been offhanded comments, there's been just a, a, a lack of just respecting my opinion in general and my knowledge in general. And, um, you know, that's, that's a big challenge that you have to get over. You have to be strong. You have to be, have a strong will and you have to be able to overcome the, those barriers that are going to be in your way because you know, the brewing industry is still in this world, you know, and there still is a lot of, um, you know, sexism and things that happen in the world. And that doesn't, it extends to the brewing industry. It definitely does. And <laughs> some people might say it doesn't, it does. <laughs> yeah. But um, like I said, it's not typical for, for every woman. Um, but you can overcome it. You can. And there's more and more women getting in the industry all the time and there's things like I said earlier about pink boots they're all there for each other you know so there's there's a lot of things um, that are helping women too yeah now on the flip side are there particular benefits that you think that a woman coming to the industry might be able to bring that a man maybe wouldn't even think about when they're brewing or marketing or whatever with the beer I wouldn't say that specifically. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say that a woman could bring something that a man couldn't. But I will say that um, because of the challenges that um, of a woman being in a male-dominated industry, I have never met a woman in the industry who didn't know her stuff. You know, who wasn't extremely educated on what she was doing, and who who didn't make excellent beer. So I do think that because there is that. Um, kind of that like barrier there for women they do have to like basically prove that they are excellent mm. so I, th I do think that that is something that women have brought to the industry every woman brewer I've ever met just is super smart and knows what she's doing yeah so so if we had somebody walk in right now a, a woman walk in right now who was you know in her mid-20s who wants to go into this field what advice would you give her about entering the brewing industry? I would say just do it, basically. Um, there, there's all kinds of ways to get into the industry, and most women who I've known who've gotten into it um, basically had to like kind of force their way in. <laughs> so that's what, if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. And it's, and it's not necessarily different for men either, mm -hmm. um, but you know, you are a woman, so uh, you do have to make yourself stand out. You have to, you have to really be knowledgeable. Um, so just know your stuff um, and be patient. Be very patient and 
um, eventually you, you'll make yourself, you'll get yourself in. Yeah. And once you're in, um, don't let anybody push you around. You know, stand up for yourself is what I would, would say. And like I said, this, it doesn't happen to every woman to where she, this, she's going to have to necessarily be that way. But if, just like in any other industry, you know, um, you got to be strong. Yeah. So that's that's the advice I would give for someone, tr oh, another woman getting trying to get in. Yeah. So now we, we hit our fun question. What's your favorite beer from a North Carolina brewery other than something you've brewed? This is an impossible question. <laughs> <laughs> I can list, can I list a couple? You can list okay. a couple. <laughs> because it is literally impossible for me to just list one. Um, so... And they change all the time, so don't take this as like this is my only favorites. But um, <laughs> your favorites today, my favorites today, and they have been for you know the last couple weeks, I guess. So um, there's AVL IPA, um, brewed by a woman, <laughs> but um, from uh, Highland down in Nashville. Um, there is um, from uh, High Wire, also in Asheville, uh, they do um, aerialist lager, and it's a great hoppy lager. I love it so much. And um, I just recently went to Sierra Nevada, also in Asheville. Everything's in Asheville, um, and had a Hellas lager from them. And um, they, it was one of their small batch um, mm -hmm. lagers that they did, and that was probably one of the greatest things I've had recently. So those three beers are That's probably, a wide range of beers though, like styles. Like yeah, the styles yeah, aren't all the same. Yeah, so. I guess two of them are lagers, but one, yeah. yeah, one was a hoppy lager, one's a hell's lager, yeah. Yeah. But um, those three, probably some of my very favorites right now. And um, one more, um, and I'm going into the sour category, is uh, D9 Strawberry Fields. <laughs> yes. And um, that beer is so good, and I have, I just, I have, I keep going up to D9 and getting more, <laughs> and I just have like a bunch in my fridge now. Yeah. So I, those are my four favorites at the moment. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, so when you're not working, when you're not brewing, what are some of some of your favorite things to do? What do you like to do on your free time? Oh man, if if I ever did have if you free have free time, <laughs> no. back when you had free time, back when I did have free time, um, I was in a band. I play the drums. Um, I like I do a lot of um, Star Wars nerdy type stuff. Um, I I go to a lot of comic conventions, um, and I actually in my free time I do homebrew more. Like I, I'm mostly professionally brewing, but I, I, I'm still brewing for fun as yeah. well. So um, it's not necessarily like the same thing. It's a little bit different just because like I get to do whatever I want. Yeah. You know? And th that's what I'm looking forward to here at Pilot because Rachel's basically given us free reign to do whatever we want. So I might homebrew even less now that I'm um, starting to work here. Yeah. So. You can test on the commercial equipment. Right, exactly. <laughs> Very fun. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add? Anything we didn't touch on that you want to make sure we get recorded? Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> awesome. I can ask some good questions there. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank we you. We really appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you.